All right, hey, hello, everyone. Um, I'm here to tell you a story, and the story will be in three parts. So let's, let's start with the story. So the part one is about here and now. So we are here in Tartu, in Estonia, enjoying this uh, conference, and you maybe have uh, one important question right now. What the heck is GeoCompex? Um, and I, I will try to, to explain that to you in the next uh, few minutes. So the idea behind GeoComp X, or at least the, less, less, uh, the combination of the GeoComp and the letter X, is about exchanging information about geocomputation. So GeoComp is about geocomputation, and then we want to exchange information. We want to work with different ideas and learn from each other and uh, and connect and, and, and work together. And also, we want to deliver new materials, cause them, uh, allow people to, to learn. And X is also open, so it gives the idea that geocomputation can be done with different tools, with different uh, frameworks, and opens the whole idea fairly well. For our project, we have a main website. So this is uh, geocompx.org um, that you can see here. Um, and um, the website already shows you uh, the most, probably the most important part of our project. So we, in this project, uh, are obsessed about writing books, which maybe sounds strange. And uh, the first book we wrote uh, is a book called Geocomputation with R. Um, Actually, we finished the second edition a month ago. So a month ago, we sent the final version of the second edition of the book. Uh, it will be published, uh, I think, of, on January 2nd, 2025. Um, and the whole idea behind the book is to just give the foundation for, for, for a person that wants to learn about your computation but also about doing that in R, in a reproducible uh, manner. So we, we go from foundations, where we show people how to think about spatial data, how to read the data, how to operate the data, and then we are going to more advanced topics, like advanced visualization, like uh, connection to other GIS software, um, and also how to do statistical or machine learning with spatial data. And the final, the last part, called applications, is about how to apply the knowledge from the previous chapters into real life scenarios. So we have three chapters about transportation, about geomarketing, and about ecology that applies the, the knowledge from the previous chapters. I already mentioned the book is reproducible. So all of the code in the book gives the result you can see on the screen, and, you, uh, and, and the code actually runs. And the other maybe interesting thing is that the book is published in a so-called hybrid model. So on the, on the one hand, there is an online version of this book, updated regularly uh, at the r.geocompx.org. And there is also a published uh, traditional paper uh, version of the book, or at least for the first edition, there will be the second edition uh, fairly soon. So we try to have something from both worlds. And this is uh, uh, our book cover for the second edition. So the book cover also uh, was done in a, I would say, not uh, regular manner. We basically started a competition. We asked people to submit their ideas but the, the whole ideas were submitted as a, also a reproducible code. So the whole book cover was created in a code that downloads the data, calculates something, visualizes the data, um, and we decided, and this was the winner of our competition. On the right, you can see an example of one page from the book, from the online version. So you can see the code, the code up uh, on the top, and then you can see the outcomes of the code uh, on the bottom. So this, the, the first edition of Geocomputation with, with R was published uh, five years ago in 2019, but um, it's not only the book. 
we also have an additional website, website with solutions to the book. So each chapter ends with several exercises. And there is additional uh, website when you can go and you can see the, the exercise or the question, see the code, how to solve it, and also see how, what's the outcome of the running this code. Is it a map or is it a number or is it a, uh, something different there? Also, for the book, we created a few R packages. One package called Geocomp, uh, uh, Geocom, Geocom, uh, PKG is about just simplifying installation process for, for the readers. So you just need to install this package and it will install all of those dependencies you need to just try the code from the book. Um, and as for examples, so the data examples in the book, we created another two packages, spdata and spdata large. So those packages are only uh, fulfilled with data that uh, are used uh, throughout the book. I mentioned the book was published in 2019, and since then, we've got uh, several translations. So the first one, you can see the, 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 the cover here, is a, tr is a translation in Korean. Um, but we also have uh, official or community translations in Japanese, in Spanish, in French, and in Chinese. So those in blue are the community ones that you can also go online and read online and maybe contribute to. After a few, few years, we started thinking about going broader. So we started to think about, OK, so maybe let's, let's also provide some materials for Python. So we started working on a, another book with a very similar name. And, and ba basically, the whole structure of the book follows uh, geocomputation with R. The, the only difference is that we are just showing examples in Python. And this, I think, has like nice feature that you can compare in so many cases, you can compare the code. You can see how the same thing can be done in R and how the same thing can be done in Python. So if you understand the concepts, you can just see the code and I think, I hope it will be helpful. Um, maybe one side note, this is not the final book cover. I just wrote, uh, 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 I think in um, maybe early chat GPT, what's the most different from, the, from, the, from Python? And the answer was either a dog or a cat. So I just looked for an image of a dog and a cat. Um, and using the same principles, the book is available online at uh, pi.geocompx.org. And it also will be published. Uh, I was even running some code today. We are doing some final polishing. Uh, I hope it will be published next year. But you know, hard to tell. But this is not the end of the Geocompex. We also have blog posts. So here you have an example of a blog post which is bilingual, meaning you have the same code in R and Python, and you can compare different uh, uh, examples of like a basic uh, spatial data analysis. And you can get the sense that they are actually fairly similar. It's not like, like we are working in totally different worlds. It's, 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 the concepts are very similar. And what I really like about the, the, the blog is that uh, the blog posts are not only written by me, but they are written by other people uh, who just want to share their knowledge or want to share stuff they learned or maybe stuff they create. Next, we have uh, all of the, 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 the things you've seen already. We store them on a GitHub organization, so we have several repositories you can see here, uh, you can, which you can visit. Uh, I'm not going to mention that in the, in the detail, but we also have a Docker uh, rep repository to just have the consistent images to, to use in, in our work. Next, we have a Discord. So there we have um, more than 400 members. And they are asking questions about spatial data. They have some discussions. Uh, they share their, their, some links or, or other materials. We, are also, we also try to be active on uh, social media, media to, just show, uh, to just share the, the materials and, and show people what can be done uh, and, and where they can find 
information. And you, in the, 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 the title of my talk is spontaneous growth. And by spontaneous, I mean that for me it was fairly surprising and I have lit very little control over it. Um, I'm, I am usually a control freak, so that's a, that's a, that's a strange place to be. But um, I, uh, for, the, for this talk, I try to look for some numbers to just sum up the impact of, of the project. Um, so I just checked the, the readers of the online version in the last 12 months. And in total, for the two books and the website, it was more than 100,000 people. Uh, we've got uh, 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 1,800 uh, stars on, on GitHub. We have more than 250 citations of the, of, the, of the books. And we are used in various courses and workshops uh, all over the, the world. And you can hopefully see that the list goes on and on and on. I don't have enough slide for that. So maybe this is a good time to, to tell exactly like who the uh, team is, like who is working on that. Um, and here on this um, photo, you can see the, the three authors of the geocomputation with R book. So on the, on the left, you can see uh, Robin Lovelace from the University of Leeds. Uh, and in the, in the center of the image is, is Janusz Mancho from Syncra, uh, from the company called Syncra. And, and the, the, the person on the right is me from six years ago or so. So maybe that's a good time to introduce you myself. So once more, hello, I'm Jakub. Uh, I am an uh, associate professor at Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań, Poland. And this is the thing I do in both my work time and my after time. But with time, talking about time, the team became larger and larger. So for the Python book, we got another two, uh, two co-authors, two people who, who, who know the, 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 the tools, and know the, they, they, they also know how to share their knowledge, and they, they, they like to do that. They, they like, like the approach. So we have Michael Dorman, we have uh, Anita Grasser. And as you've seen, we have everything on GitHub, we have um, book and website and everything else. So we also got some contributors. Firstly, we've got on the community translation, translators. So we've got Mireya, we've got Oliver, we've got Baba that, that put a lot of effort, their own time, uh, just to translate the book into their, their languages to share the book with people that do not speak English. And then we have, uh, as you can see, a long, long list of direct contributors. So those are the people who actually change something on the website or on the book. So sometimes it's just a fixing a typo. We make a lot of typos, by the way. Uh, but, some, but often it's also adding some new content or maybe removing some content that is outdated or maybe, or maybe improving an image or, a, or an example. Gladly, this is not the, the end, because we also have people who open issues on our repositories. So we've got, uh, I don't remember the number, I think like 200 people or more, maybe more that, that done that. You can see their uh, GitHub names here on this slide. So those are the people who also made an impact on the project. Sometimes they just pointed out, oh, this, this maybe can be improved, or maybe they have an idea, oh, just try to do this. So how, how everything works? So what's, what's the tools, uh, what are the tools behind the, the project? So the project, when we started the project, when we wrote uh, the geocomputation with our book, our uh, tool was uh, our markdown uh, with a package called bookdown. So basically, it's just a markdown extended to run R code, and bookdown is just the way of how to write an online book. So you have chapters, uh, you can click on the table of content, you can uh, have the book in as uh, HTML, but you also have a, have, can have this book as PDF. Uh, for geocomputation with Python, 
we moved to a newer uh, platform, newer publishing software called Quarto. So Quarto is very similar idea. You write your text and your code in Markdown, and then it is rendered in the form of a book, in, this, in our case. Um, or it is, it is rendered as a website. Our website is also built on Quarto. What's great about Quarto is that Quarto allows you to write and run R code, Python code, Julia code, so you can uh, write books not only with one language. Then we use uh, GitHub and GitHub Actions extensively because all of the code, all of the, um, all the website, the books, everything is on, on GitHub, and every time we make a push to the main uh, branch of the repository, there is a GitHub action in the background that checks if the code in the book is still okay. So it, the co it goes through every, almost every example in the book and give us the green light if everything is fine or red light if some example is broken. And this is often with combination with Docker. So we have Docker images just to simplify and, 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 and streamline this process. Uh, our, the books are hosted on uh, Netlify, which was really nice because they allows us to work as an open source uh, project. So we've, we, we do not need to pay for the larger bandwidth there. We are using Zotero as the reference manager. And I mentioned we also have some R packages that we use for uh, installing dependencies or for uh, sharing data. So how it works? Um, I told you I told you I, I told you the story already in a in a, sh in a short list. So, so the, the the story is very simple. You I just type something, I push that to um, to the to GitHub repository, and if that's pushed to main. GitHub action starts, checks the code, and if everything's good, then the book is updated. The, webs the, book, the, the book's website is updated. Of course, this is a simplified example, because I only push directly to the main branch when I'm just fixing a typo, or just adding one sentence, like non-controversial sentence. But when I'm doing something more complex, if I'm adding new content, or changing something extensively, then I just create a pull request. And I, I, uh, then I ask one of my uh, colleagues to do a review. So mostly, you are not only an author of some part of the book or the website, but you are also helping as a reviewer of other parts. Uh, so all of the content is seen by more than one uh, person. Similarly, we have this uh, solution website and the solution website is uh, run once a week. So every week uh, uh, on Sunday, the solution website is run for the exactly the same purpose. We want to be sure that the code, the solution code is still correct, uh, that everything works, given that we are updating the packages, updating the dependencies, and so on. So you know the current state. I hope that you already know more or less what Geocomp X is. So let's maybe move uh, back in time a little bit. So that's Poznań Poland, uh, and the year is 2016. And um, I was just finishing my PhD, and we've got a researcher visiting our department to teach our students. Uh, and that person was uh, Robin Lovelace. Um, so we met in 2016, he came to Poland, and one day after the, the course, we went for a beer. And in my, br in my brain, so, so after, after a few beers, I, 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 I vaguely remember someone took a photo of us. And I spent, I don't know how many hours, but I was unable to find the photo. So I just prepared one using my graphical <laughs> skills. Um, so that's me and Robin, more or less, in 2016. So we met, and over the beer, we started talking. 
And I'm, I'm, I've been talking to Robin. Oh, I'm writing a, this book about like, spatial analysis in R. And Robin was, oh, I, I also thought about that for a long, long time. The only difference was that I was writing this book in Polish. And like, the whole idea of writing something in English was crazy and uh, not achievable. Uh, but he was like, yeah, I, right now I'm finishing like large project, but I will get back to you in like half a year. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's just like being nice and, and, and that's all. And we were up to a few beers, so uh, everything is good. And what, but what was, what was our motivation? The motivation was that back then, not, so long ago, not, not, not that long time ago, it was really hard to find the comprehensive materials about this topic. You maybe have a blog post here or there, or maybe an answer of Stack Overflow here or there, but nothing that goes from the first step to, to, to um, let's say, uh, little bit advanced topics. And we also had, already we had in our minds that we wanted to have something like that a few years before. Because we, we, we learned from the, from the scraps of different materials, but we wanted to have this comprehensive material. And then I, I finished my PhD. I moved to US, to, uh, to Cincinnati. Robin uh, was in uh, Leeds. And I've got an email. Oh, hi, Jakub. I'm attaching the, uh, the draft of the pro proposal to publisher. Just check it, and we'll send it next week. That was, that was actually one of the most surprising emails I've got. Um, and then? We wrote the proposal, we sent that proposal, some publishers were interested, so some were not. But what we pushed, uh, the idea we pushed from the beginning was that we want to work in the open and we want uh, to have the book in the open as well. So we, we made that clear to every publisher that we don't want to have only the published, the, the, the printed uh, version of the book, we also want to have everything online uh, for, for free. And then we started using the R Markdown, we started using Bookdown, and back then we were using uh, Travis CI. And we had different domains, we have different website names, uh, and we just, we just try to start the project. So we are now in March 2017, and you can see this is the first commit I made to the, the repository in the book. So it's then uh, March 7, 2017. So every day before going to, to my work, I was waking up uh, an hour or two hours earlier, and I was uh, sitting in front of my computer, and I was trying to write the first sentence. And it was really hard, because in my mind, if I push something online, people will see that. So people will judge. People will think something about that. And which was fairly scary, especially for non-native uh, speaker. And then on the bottom, you can see my actual first commit. So March 25th. So it took me um, almost three weeks to, uh, of everyday work to publish the first sentence. From that moment on, it became just a bit easier. So what were the initial challenges we had? So we started writing the book. We've got some ideas. Um, but the first challenge was like, what's the infrastructure? So we look at some other projects similar. We, we get some from this project, some from this project. Um, and another challenge was the book structure. I think we proposed to publish one book structure. And after two months, we totally changed the book structure. We were not happy with that. Um, another challenge was the, the, the code style or the text style. Like, what's the, what's the uh, should in R we can, you can use uh, equal uh, uh, assignment as, a, as a assignment operator or you can use a left or right arrow. So we want to be consistent, so we need to decide on the, on the style. Also, what is uh, maybe also strange is that Robin is British, so we need to decide are we using American English? or British English, so, or Polish. Um, so 
I think we decided not to use Polish because, yeah, it probably it would took, take uh, it would took Robin a few few months to learn. But uh, at, at the end, strangely, we moved to American English to maybe make my life easier, because for me that would be easier, and Robin uh, uh, for, for Robin it was easier to adjust to that. And then we've got a lot of subjective decisions to make, to make because. You know, we have tons of tools, we have tons of data sets, tons of problems that we can solve with spatial data, but it's impossible to write infinite book. So we need to stop somewhere, we need to focus on something. So there was a lot of decisions. We can include this, but maybe exclude that, this is important, this could be shortened, and so on. We, were, we also didn't know exactly how to collaborate on that book. Like, should we push the to the main branch, or maybe start by opening issues and disca having discussions, maybe email each other, or... So we, we were learning by doing. We were seeing, oh, this works, this doesn't work, like maybe, maybe don't push to main and just break the book for the next week. Um, and we tried different ways of communica communicating with each other. So we use GitHub issues, we, uh, we have uh, one or two public re uh, repos to, for discussions and for sharing some data sets. We, back then we used also Gitter, we, uh, it, we, we called uh, each other on Skype, and et cetera, et cetera. Of course, the initial challenge that never ends is writing. You need to sit down and you need to write. So that was March 2017, but now let's, let's maybe change the move to a different location. Now we are in Vienna, in Germany, and this is uh, June 2017, so not that uh, long after. And I, I, as I said before, we were working in the open from the first push to the, to the repository. And firstly, it is a great motivator, because you can, when I, when I write something and I push that, I can see online that the book is growing, it's getting larger, there's a new image online and so on, so I'm, I'm happy with that. But also, what we started seeing, that even though th this project started from nothing, we can see that some people were started to uh, contribute. So as I mentioned, they were like opening issues, maybe done some um, suggestions or changes to the code. So you can see here, this is, this is the list or some print screens of the issues from the Jupyter R repository and pull requests. So both, there are in around 500 each. And on June 9th, 2017, we've got this. So this is an, a, a, a pull request from, from Janusz Monchow, and he's suggesting some changes and some, gives some new ideas. And we like the ideas. We like his, uh, uh, his way of thinking. Um, so we expanded the team. So th this is the photo, this is actual photo. This is not uh, generative AI anymore. Uh, hopefully you can get that. Um, so that was June 2017, but the photo was taken in, in August 2018. So this is the first time we met face to face, three of, three of us we met face to face. So, so we mostly write, I think we wrote like 85% of the book, never seeing like three of us, we never spent a minute in the same place. So from that moment on, we started working in different places in the world. We are starting working together on, on this book. And what, when I look at this process in 2017, 2018, 2019, I, I, I've seen that this process is basically a cycle. And fairly positive, nice cycle. Because we have been writing a book using uh, FOSS tools and, um, and, and, and uh, our different R packages and, and, and so on and so on. And as I mentioned, there was always uh, the continuous integration and, and, and so on. So, so the code was always checked. So try to, try to think about it. Like, okay, I'm writing code, everything is, is uh, great, and next week I'm writing new code, I'm pushing that, and there is an error. Uh, online. And this error could be because there, was some, there were some changes in another tool. So I can look at these changes, and I can maybe discover that there is a bug introduced in other software. 
So I'm using the software, I'm writing the book based on the software, and I see that the software has a maybe, maybe has a bug. So I can contribute to this software. I can maybe write a book bug report, I maybe can give a suggestion, because I also try to put myself as a, as a mindset of a learner. So I try to think about, oh, maybe this could be made a little bit simple for, for people, so maybe I can suggest something. Or maybe I can uh, write a small pull request with some code to, uh, to that software. And then, again, the bug is solved, or maybe the code is improved, and I'm writing the book again, and I'm happy with that, that the book is getting larger and larger. And what we discovered after a few months, or for, uh, uh, that this, those, those software contributors, that we contribute to their repositories and their, their pro uh, projects, they started contributing back. So for example, they started uh, adding suggestions. Or maybe if we wrote something that was maybe not totally accurate, they were like, uh, like correcting us, or maybe they were even writing small paragraphs. So they were giving back to our project, uh, uh, and then we we're again, we we're writing the book using those tools. And then we started having more and more external contributors. So this, this is the cycle I've been seeing for the last seven years. That we are creating something which impacts software, which impacts our book, which impacts people, that impacts the book, and so on and so on. So this is the, 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 the cycle I really like, and I, and I initially called that the, an open source cycle. So the book was finally published in 2019. Uh, and you can see the, the, car, the, the cover of the first edition of the book. Um, but it was not the end of the story. Because if you look at the, the graph here, you can see that we were very active in 2017, 2018. But even though the, public, the book was published in 2019, we're still adding stuff, we're making the tiny adjustments, we're fixing things. Uh, sometimes we're more active, sometimes less active, but we're act active all the time. Of course, there's also life. So since 2016, there were a few weddings, uh, several babies, a lot of git commits, uh, and many other life events. So sometimes it is easier to contribute, sometimes uh, maybe, maybe less, but we are still uh, very into this project and we are still doing that. Because in that, that time, we also gave a lot of workshops, presentations, uh, courses, um, we've been writing blog posts, and we had some webinars during the COVID time, and we still were keeping the open source cycle running. But we are also actively working in different fields. So we've always, uh, often found ourselves working in different projects. And some projects were in R, some projects were in Python, some projects were in C++ or, or Rust, or, 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 et cetera, et cetera. So because of that, we also seen that there is a need maybe to, to expand and to create materials also in, in different languages. And until th that moment, we're still using the, the abbreviation Geocomp R, because this was the compilation with R. But that was not, not longer um, that appropriate for our project, because the project changed. And we uh, were getting more accustomed to different ideas as well. Uh, so in um, the last few years, we renamed the project Geocomp X. We uh, got the domain, we cleaned the, the links, uh, and uh, last year we officially uh, started promoting the Geocomp with Python book. So that's, that's about the past. And the last part is maybe a little bit about the future. So maybe some of you are, are and, and I, am, I probably assume that many of you already know why we are doing that. 
because I, I, I know that many of you are doing the very similar things um, with your software, with your uh, tools. But I, I start, I, I've, 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 uh, when I prepared this talk, I was thinking, um, and I was just looking at myself and my motivation. So the initial motivation was definitely to give back. Because we, we've learned from those scrapes of the materials, we want to give our knowledge back to other people. But in the, in the process, we are learning new things. So we are getting better with those tools, we are getting better with the ideas. Not only with the ideas and tools, but also we're, get, we're, we're getting better in how to uh, show them to other people in maybe more approachable way. So I, I like this phrase that, that writing is thinking and teaching is understanding. And so I, I think it's, it's very true, in my, at least in my case. I know that some people have higher hopes. So some people want to make a difference. Uh, I, Robin, the, the book author, is definitely one of those people. That when you are showing open source materials, when you showing, are showing reproducible examples, and you are using uh, real life problems, and showing other people how they, they can be solved or just improved, then you can make another uh, actual impact on the world. But I also treat my materials and materials of Robin and Yannis and other people as a reference. Because I know those materials very well, so when I'm like confused about something, I just go there. I'm just like, I know, oh, this is in the chapter eight or, or chapter, chapter five. Creative process is also very enjoying. Because you need to think about how to make a consistent but fun to, to, to write book. And maybe for some people it's about uh, becoming famous and rich. Um, I would cross out this. Uh, there is a, a quote uh, on, uh, on the bottom of the slide that, um, that if you want to get rich from, from books, technical books, the chance is very low. And probably it's much, much better financially to just do a, some site consulting or, 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 or even work in a fast food restaurant as a part-time job. And that's, and that's definitely the case. However, when I, when I showed that, this slide to my book co-authors, Yannis wrote me back and, 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 and was very happy and he said like, oh, I, wrote, I, I bought a laptop from the, the money from the book. So. But now he's using the same laptop to write the second edition, so I, I don't know if it, if it works financially uh, very well. Um, but I, I think you can definitely build a reputation. And, I, and I'm an example here because I'm standing in front of you just talking about this project, so, um, so I think this is a good example of that. Referencing the, 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 the talk of Stephanie from yesterday, she was talking about uh, having inst institutional support. And I think this is very important, at least in my case. So in my case, my university usually either never complains and never prays that I'm working on those books or on those projects, which is perfect. So I'm just left alone and I can just do work on this project. Uh, and this is a perfect support, for, at least for me, for this project. Another thing is that there is a community. And going back to 2017, I was afraid of writing the first sentence. Oh, I will make a typo, I will make maybe grammar mistake, or maybe I will be uh, not exactly correct or something. And I was afraid of people commenting on, 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 on things or um, writing bad comments and, and so on. I think it never happened, or, or almost never. At least I, I, maybe my brain is just deleting those comments. Uh, but yeah, I only felt uh, good emotions from, from community. And for those kind of projects, it's very important to, to, to be in this good zone, to have this um, good attitude. When we started writing the book, uh, the first edition, uh, the infrastructure and the, um, both from technical point and scientific point of view was there, but it was still not exactly stable and there were not a lot of examples of how to do that. But in the last eight years, a lot of things uh, changed. So here you have examples of um, 
four different projects using very similar approach. So all of those projects, they have their uh, books available online for everyone to read and learn new things and apply them in their work. So what are the hard things? What are the, the things that are still uh, not easy? I think getting started is never easy. Like if you start a new project and you have just blank screen in front of you, it's always hard. But there are still some technical challenges. Uh, I've mentioned that when you are using those uh, tools like Bookdown or Quarto, they allows you to have a HTML version and PDF version of the book. And but PDF version goes to 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 LaTeX, through LaTeX and there are many differences that you need to uh, or you uh, either you need to know or you will learn in the process. Because the HTML book works and everything is great and then you try to create the PDF version and either it fails and you fight with that for 5 hours or to, uh, or the result runs and you get the PDF and your perfect table looks like this. Uh, maybe not exactly what I wanted to achieve. So that's a still a struggle. Similarly, uh, publishers are still, at least the publishers I know of, are still not into this approach of working on GitHub or similar tools. So they are just sending you a PDF with comments, then you need to go, and I think this could be also streamlined, improved. Because this project is, is entirely so, um, based on our self-motivation, finding time is sometimes difficult. I told you about the weddings and babies and so on. Um, but another thing I, I, I thought about that it's fairly hard is getting feedback from people. Because I showed you that we've got fairly uh, large number of readers, people are active online talking about the book, using the book in the courses. But when I ask people uh, to fill uh, short form, about the second edition of the book, we've got just a dozen or so responses. So it's really hard to get the, the, the feedback from people to learn what actually uh, is good or what, what can we improve. Um, and if you have any ideas how we can get feedback uh, better, just let me know. I, I, I will really appreciate that. Sometimes making decision is hard because you have few people working on this project and you need to uh, make a decision in a way that everyone is happy. Because that's the approach here. Again, we want to have a nice conversation and, and we want to uh, be engaged and, 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 and enjoy our work. So, so sometimes this, those decisions are, are hard. Um, me measuring impact is also hard. Because I showed you some numbers, but often those like our employers usually don't care about, oh, GitHub stars or something similar. Maybe they care a little bit about citation, but uh, not about the, the rest of the things. So we don't, and we don't, and don't know, like, so we know more or less the, the number of people who, uh, who opened the website, but we don't know how many projects were created by, by those people and so on and so on. And the, the, the last one is the, I think, the never ending story. So how to, uh, be uh, sustainable. So how we can run this project not for the next month, but for a longer time. And again, this project is, and its growth is very spontaneous. And I have no idea um, how to make it sustainable for everyone that, that who wants to contribute to this project. And at the same time, not to burn out myself. Because the, I think this is also important. So I'm here to not only t tell you about the project, about the pros and cons and, and struggles and successes, but I also want to show you that if you want, and I would encourage you to contribute to the project. So I've, show, I've showed you we've got the geocompex.org website, um, and we have books, we have blog posts, we have other materials. So for example, if you have an idea for a blog post that you want to write and you want to share with people, we, we, can allow, we can give you the platform for that, and we also uh, are reviewing the blog post. So we are also trying to, be, to give some feedback to the blog post before the blog post is published. 
Uh, I also think that sharing the, the project is also important, because when you share the project, the more people know about it, so there is a larger chance that somebody will contribute. Uh, so it's about telling people, it's about uh, using uh, social media, it's about maybe writing reviews if you, have a, if you have a copy. But on the other hand, you can also help others by asking questions. Because if you have a good question, then other people can ask, uh, answer the question, and many people can learn from the answers. Or maybe you, you created something and you want to share something. Just go to our Discord and just share that there, and people will be happy to see that there is a new thing. Maybe they will, they, they will never, ha they never had before, but they, maybe that's useful for them in their work. You are an international crowd, so maybe you can also help with community translations, or maybe create a new one. I'm always uh, uh, telling the same to my students, just start small, so, uh, but now I'm saying, oh, just translate the book. So, no, just start small. Um, and, of course, you can contribute. And I, we are always happy when we see someone contributing and, and gi giving feedback, uh, giving suggestions, and, and so on. So, Quarto is the, is the tool we are using currently for the Python book and for the website. And the basic idea of the Quarto is that you are writing in a format called QMD. So this is a Quarto markdown, which is basically a markdown plus code, R code, Python code, Julia code. Um, and then the code goes to some engine. So it goes to Jupyter or Neat. Then it, it is a uh, regular markdown goes to Pandoc, and then you can have a PDF and website and, and, and many others. So just to uh, say that one, one last time, technical stuff. If you just want to push your uh, book online or website online, it's, it's very, very uh, simple. And, and you can just install Quarto and just type Quarto create, and then you can select that you can create a website or a book or something, and you will have the whole template, and you can have everything online in 15 seconds. I, as I said, I encourage people to start small, but start small with some kind of a template. So what I, what I usually do when I start a new project, I create a template for the book or template for the website, because then I have a structure to where I want to, uh, when I where I can put my ideas into. Is it a blog or a post or is it a book chapter? To having the structure helps me, so uh, I hope it will also it could be useful for you. When you create materials, I think s sometimes people are lost uh, when it comes to what's the audience for your materials, because sometimes you can see the materials that are basically written. More, more or less for computers, not for people. And, and that's, that's the, 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 my, my uh, suggestion to you, that just spend a short time and think, what's your audience? And it's perfectly fine if the audience is actually yourself uh, from yesterday or from a month ago. But be, have that in mind. To whom you are writing? Are you writing for uh, beginners, or you are writing for some, somebody outside of geospatial domain, or you are writing to, to some people who are very advanced? Because it's when you are mixing all of those, I, I don't know if that's the, the easiest. For the book projects, also those des the, the decision is between self-publishing and having a publisher. Another uh, decision is about what's, what's the license that you, you may uh, uh, decide on. And of course, it's, those are hard decisions. Like, we decided, I can give you just a, a, an explanation of why we decided on a publisher. First of all, I love paper books. So I think that's, that's enough. But with the publisher, we also get um, reviews of every chapter, so we, for the first edition of Gcotech with R, I think we've got like four rounds of reviews. So we've got great structure feedback, that was everything was organized from, from the publisher side, uh, which was for me very, very helpful, and I, I, I really cherish the, the reviews we've got. But on, this, on the other hand, with self-publishing, you need to do more, but you have probably also uh, larger control about the, the outcome.
So a few tips on creating or collaborating of those kinds of materials. Outline is very important, especially when with collaboration. So if you work with two people or three people or five people, if there is no outline, there will be a chaos. And there will be, there, there, there will be a need for, the, for, uh, for people always to reorganize things and uh, it will be very hard to, to do. With geocomputation with R, as I mentioned, we started with an outline and we, I think, changed this outline two times in the process. And then we changed that a little bit for the second edition as well. Uh, so it's good to have an outline, but not to be, to be afraid of just changing it later. Style guide, great thing to have. So we have external document, fairly short document just saying, oh, this is the assignment operator. This is the, uh, we are using American English. We are the bullet points uh, do not end with a dot and similar. Small things, but try to imagine you have a large book and each chapter has a different style. It's a small thing, but readers will, 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 will definitely notice and they will uh, be detached from the book, I believe. Or at least that's only me. Because of this book, in 2017, as I mentioned, I woke up every morning before my work, I started to, uh, writing. And I, I, start, I, I try to keep this habit from that moment on. Of course, I'm, it's not 365 days per year, so I haven't been writing for the last few weeks of traveling and so on. But usually when I have fairly stable uh, time in my job and so on, I usually try to write every day. Sometimes, on some days, it's a, it's a sentence. On some days, those are eight pages. There's one technical tip that we started using by accident, and then we discovered that this, this is actually a thing called writing one sentence uh, uh, per line in the, in the markdown files. Because if you do one sentence per line, and then you start another line, another sentence, they will still be, still be the same paragraphs, but if you use uh, git, uh, differences in Git, you will see what sentence was changed. So you won't get the whole paragraph highlighted, but only the sentence that was changed. So this way, we are organizing our text in a technical way, and we see that what was changed by the other author, and we can review that, we can maybe discuss those changes and so on. So this is technical advice, but important, probably more important is uh, social advice to stay in touch with book authors. So I have a great pleasure to have great book authors, which I uh, really admire not only as, uh, uh, as uh, geocomputation people, but also as humans. So we stay in touch, we, uh, we visit each other, we, we talk, we write uh, ourselves uh, messages, not only about the book, but also about our lives. And I think this is important, to have this connection to other people, because this, again, gives you the energy to, uh, to work on those materials. But reflecting on the, on the projects, I also look at the contributors. And you also need to be aware that contributors come and go which is totally perfectly fine and understandable for the book project. Because some contributors are basically the readers. So they are reading the book, and then they are seeing something they don't maybe enjoy, or maybe they want to improve, or maybe they have some questions. Then they are contributing. Then when the book is uh, done, they, they read the book, they are not contributing anymore. But then, in a few months, we have a new reader, or a few weeks, or a few days, and again, the same cycle starts again. And this is perfectly fine, this is, this is natural. I just wanted to give you the, the, this knowledge. Project is a completely living thing. So neither Robin, neither me, neither Yanis, neither Anita, neither Michael, and neither anyone uh, else from the project has any complete control over project. And we, back in 2016, I would never imagine that it would be, um, it would end up in one book and not even talking about the rest of the things I showed you. And, and for me, it's just the, the way it is. I just, 
I just, I just, I'm just, just happy that it's still a living thing, that it's still growing and it's still uh, getting better and better. But to finish up my tips, it's the energy, the, this being a kind person, being a positive person, is crucial here. For those kind of projects, you need to keep the energy up, you need to, you need to smile, you need to uh, be, be, be good to other people, and they will, be, they, will, they will do the same to you, and they will do the same to, to, the, to the project. So the final uh, advice, or maybe final suggestion from me for you is, now the conference is almost over, so you will have a lot of time, so just go and write and share the stuff you know, because you know a lot of things. Thank you. Thank you, Jakub. Excellent talk. We have a few minutes for two questions. Use the opportunity. I have a warm-up question then. What's the biggest lesson learned for you throughout the journey? I hope that during the presentation I showed you that there were like no one lesson. It was like thousands of, maybe not thousands, but definitely dozens of different lessons. I think that the, the biggest lesson is about this open source cycle. That it's not that, oh, we wrote a book and we wrote, somebody read, that's the end. And that was my uh, thinking 10 years ago. That, oh, there is an author, an expert in some field, uh, he or she are, are writing a book, publishing the book, and other people are reading, and that's the end. And maybe that was, probably that, that's, that was the case with, uh, in the past. But now with open source and all of those uh, technical scientific writing tools, we have this ability to, to be a part of this cycle. So you creating something means also that somebody else will add to your project or maybe to other projects, or maybe they will just apply that in their work, also making a change in the world. So, so I think this is the, the biggest lesson. Thank you. One more question we can take. All right. Seems everything was clear. Let's make uh, another round of applause to Jakob.